is having 100% of your portfolio in stocks in retirement an absolutely crazy idea? Absolutely. If you have 100% of your portfolio in stocks at the soonest market downturn or recession, you're risking your entire retirement. Not necessarily. If we actually look at historical results, we see that in a lot of cases, an all stock portfolio delivers better outcomes. Well, there seems to be a difference of opinion here. So luckily we don't have to rely on either opinion. We can look at the data. So let's do that. Now, this question of if an all stock portfolio in retirement is a good idea is a question that is a little bit like an onion. We're gonna be peeling back some layers as we go through this presentation today. When tackling this question, our first intuition is that an all stock portfolio is probably a pretty bad idea in retirement. And that's really because we expect some significant volatility in a stock market portfolio. We've seen that historically. For instance, in the last two decades, we've effectively seen four different bear markets within the US stock market. Two of those four bear markets, we saw a nearly 50% drawdown. Now, when we're in the accumulation phase, this isn't the end of the world because we can keep working, contributing, and allow for that recovery. But when we're in retirement, now we have to be taking from our portfolio, which furthers that drawdown. If we suffer a 50% drawdown, our portfolio cuts in half, we need to double our money, make 100% to get back to break even. Well, if we're pulling from our assets during that time, and rather than being down 50%, we're down 60%, well, now we need to make 150% to get back to break even. And so it would seem that the more risk we take with our retirement portfolio, the worse outcomes we will receive. So our intuition would tell us that an all stock portfolio in retirement would be a pretty bad idea. But what do the historical results tell us? Now on the left-hand side of the screen, I have a chart that shows the ending value of a 30-year retirement with a starting balance of a million dollars and you taking 4% per year as a withdrawal rate. Now, each of the data points that you see on the chart are one of those ending value portfolios. Now with this chart, we're comparing an all stock portfolio to what is typically considered a balanced portfolio, a classic 60-40 with 60% into stocks, 40% into bonds. Now understand that the Y axis is being showed within current dollars. Now what we see with this data from 1928 to 2022 is we see that the blue line here, the all stock portfolio actually ends up winning the majority of the time. For instance, 91% of the time, the all stock portfolio will beat the balance portfolio in terms of this ending balance. But that alone doesn't tell us that much because in retirement, we really get one shot at retirement. Now, what's interesting is that when we dig deeper into the numbers, we peel back a few of those layers of this given onion, we'll see that it doesn't exactly cater towards the balance portfolio winning out. In fact, in a lot of situations, depending on what metrics you're looking at, the all stock portfolio still wins. For instance, when we look at failure rate, we see that a all stock portfolio fails about 7.8% of the time. A balanced portfolio is slightly better at 6.3% of the time. We see that both with the average ending and median ending value, we see about double the amount on average within the all stock portfolio than we would see within a balanced portfolio. The next metric we'll look at is how close we were to failure. So if our portfolio's ending value was less than 35% of its starting value, so for instance, if we started with a million dollar portfolio and our ending balance was less than $350,000 in current dollars, that would be considered a near failure. We see that an all stock portfolio has 12.5% near failures, whereas a balanced portfolio has 17.2% near failures. Then the last metric we'll look at is what I would consider a large finishing portfolio. So this would be if your portfolio ended 300% higher in current dollars than you started with. And again, in this scenario, the all stock portfolio wins. So although historical results aren't 100% conclusive, we see that it, most metrics certainly cater towards an all stock portfolio being better than the classic 60-40 that's touted as the optimal golden retirement portfolio so often. For instance, there were only a few times historically where the bond portfolio added to your outcomes and ended up with a balanced portfolio winning over a all stock portfolio. But in each of these given years, we see the balanced portfolio really only win marginally. In most of the other years when the stock portfolio wins, we see that it wins by a fairly wide margin. So does this mean that an all stock portfolio is simply superior 
to a balanced portfolio? Well, not so fast. That's a little bit of jumping to conclusions. And the last thing that you should do is base your retirement off of a quick analysis that some guy on YouTube showed you. As we peel back additional layers, we may get a different interpretation of the data. For instance, thus far we've used a 60-40 portfolio as our comparison. We've used a 4% withdrawal rate and a 30-year retirement. As we start to mess with each of those given variables, we'll likely see different findings and different outcomes. Now, as fun as it would be to run through 100 different charts showing a bunch of changing variables, I'd rather show you my critical findings from running all of this analysis. The first thing I want to share with you is that time horizons matter. So on the screen, I have varying time horizons for someone's retirement, everything from 10 years to 40 years. Now, what we're gonna see from changing these time horizons is that the shorter our time horizon, the more it caters towards adding some safety to our portfolio. The longer the time horizon, the more we should have a little bit more allocated to stocks. And this should match our intuition. If we think about it, we're taking more risk within an all stock portfolio. So even on the shorter term side of a 10 to 15 year retirement, we could experience a market downturn large enough that we could see some failures in an all stock portfolio. Now on the flip side, the longer our retirement, the more we should have allocated to stocks because the more we're gonna have downward pressures like inflation beating down our portfolio. Now the second critical finding that's hidden if we're only looking at ending portfolios is not if the portfolio fails, but when the portfolio fails. And what we'll see is when stock portfolios fail, they tend to fail faster than the balanced portfolio. For instance, on the screen, I have two given examples here of 1929 and 1970. Now we've raised the withdrawal rates to 5% from 4%. And what we're gonna see is when stock portfolio failures happen, they happen much sooner. So for instance, in 1929, we see that this all stock portfolio would have failed at about year 17 versus the balanced 60-40 portfolio would have lasted all the way till year 25. So we would have gotten eight more years out of a balanced portfolio than we would have gotten out of the stock portfolio. In the 1970 example, we see that the all stock portfolio failed about two years earlier than the balanced portfolio. So we'll consistently see because of that market risk that we'd be taking with that all stock portfolio, they tend to fail faster when they fail. The third layer we'll peel back is in relation to withdrawal rates. Now we're gonna analyze this in the same way we analyze those time horizons, looking at various withdrawal rates. And there might be some things that are quite surprising here. For instance, the smaller withdrawal rate that you're using, it actually caters in certain ways towards a more balanced portfolio. I would say this is against intuition in certain ways, as most advisors would say, if you have a low withdrawal rate, you can risk a lot more. And that's exactly what you're doing. You're risking a lot more. So for instance, if you have levels of safety, you might be risking those levels of safety by taking more risk within the stock market. If we saw a large enough drawdown, all of a sudden those levels of safety vanish. Now, historically, we would have seen that a two and 3% withdrawal rate would have had 0% failure rates in both situations. But understand that if we see a large enough drawdown, you are risking some of that safety potentially. Now the trade-off there is in most cases, you're gonna result in a much higher ending balance. Now finding number four is can you handle the volatility? And I would guess this is the one finding that will rule out an all stock portfolio for most retirees. Having an all stock portfolio means that we are subjecting ourselves to the roller coaster ride that the stock market can sometimes be. And this is a very difficult thing to behaviorally stick to as we move through retirement. For obvious reasons, we typically find that risk tolerance for retirees ends up shrinking because at the end of the day, the money that you have saved up is the money that needs to last for the rest of your life. And so for every loss within a retirement portfolio, that feels like a loss of future income and that hurts a little bit more than when we were working. Now in a all stock portfolio, this volatility can be quite gut wrenching at times. For instance, if we would have started our retirement in 1990, for the first 10 years of our retirement, we would have seen incredible growth within that all stock portfolio, going from a million dollars in current dollars all the way up to above two and a half million dollars. But then over the next 10 years, we would have seen significant losses. Through the tech bubble and through the bear market of 2008, we would have seen our portfolio cut by 55%. That two and a half million dollar portfolio would have fallen to less than 1.25 million dollars. Now, the good news here is that this portfolio eventually recovered. 
and grew above 2 million by the end of this 30 year retirement. But dealing with that gut wrenching volatility for an entire decade of your retirement is something that most retirees can't handle in our experience. And with this in mind, I think we can all agree that the biggest risk here is making changes to that plan. For instance, you have a long-term plan of let's say staying in an all stock portfolio. Then you experience a significant drawdown and you change that from an all stock portfolio to a more balanced portfolio, maybe 50-50. Well, now all of a sudden we've locked in that loss and as the market recovers, we're gonna experience a fraction of that recovery. And so setting up a plan at the beginning of your retirement and making sure we can stick to that plan, both behaviorally as well as quantitatively, is extremely important in this entire discussion. Now I wanna share another interesting perspective that can add to this discussion. And that's that all stock portfolios are quite fragile. So for instance, when anybody compares an all stock portfolio to a balanced portfolio, at least from an advisor standpoint, Typically, we're looking at something like the S&P 500 or a total stock market portfolio. So it's a diversified stock portfolio. What we'll see is that stock portfolios can get quite fragile if you don't stay diversified. For instance, if we start in 1972 with a 30-year retirement, 4% withdrawal rate, in a total stock market portfolio under inflation-adjusted dollars, we started with a million dollars and we ended with $763,000. Now, the problem here is oftentimes when we're analyzing portfolios for retirees, their starting portfolio is typically tilted in one direction or another. For instance, large cap growth has done extremely well over the last decade. And so oftentimes what I see in a lot of portfolios is they are very heavily weighted into large cap growth. And so what happens when we take this historical simulation and we trade out that stock portfolio? Now we're looking at an all large cap growth portfolio. Well, now we see a complete failure here. This large cap stock portfolio didn't last this retiree past 1994. We can look at another example. Let's start retirement in 1999. Now we're not yet to the end of a 30 year retirement, but nonetheless, stick with me. And so despite some market volatility during the first decade of this person's retirement, they still have a margin of safety as they sit right now. But what happens if rather than being invested in this total stock market portfolio, they were invested in a portfolio that follows the NASDAQ? Well, we know that the NASDAQ is a little bit more tech heavy of an index. And when the tech bubble burst, it obviously hit the tech industry harder than other industries. Well, in the first four years of retirement, this retiree would have lost 80% of their retirement portfolio and it would have barely lasted a full decade. And so we see that all stock portfolios can be quite fragile and it's very important to have a very balanced, diversified all stock portfolio if you decide to go that direction. But would we recommend it here at Safeguard? And the answer is no. And here's why. First, I think historical results are a good data point, but we shouldn't put too much stock into those historical results. The reason being is because when we're using a historical timeline, we have a lot of overlapping data. If you think about this, if we're using 100 years worth of data and we have a 30 year retirement, there are really only three distinct periods of results within that 100 year history. There's a lot of overlapping data. For instance, if we go from 1928 to 1957 as our first data point, we then move this window one year over and we go from 1929 to 1958. We have 29 years worth of overlap between those given retirements, despite that looking like a completely different data point. We ultimately should be running something called a Monte Carlo where we can simulate significantly more distinctly different trial periods. Typically what we find when we run simulations is that stock results get a little bit worse. Second, when we are looking at this very simplistic analysis, we're leaving out all of the dynamic income strategies that are available to you as a retiree. For instance, this entire time we've been looking at prorated withdrawals in this study. So in a balanced portfolio, you're taking 60% of your income from stocks, 40% from bonds, and you're rebalancing at the end of that given year. Well, in reality, there may be times where we're holding a cash position or another safe asset, and we're holding that position for if we see some stock market volatility. At that point, we might be shifting our entire income withdrawals from that safe asset, and so we're allowing that stock portfolio to recover, thus leading to a balanced portfolio at times, leading to better results. There are also different strategies we need to be utilizing within our retirement plan, like social security timing strategies. In addition, based on the regime that we are entering into, as we enter into retirement, we may wanna shift those given allocations. For instance, over the last few years, we've been looking at very low interest rates. Thus, there is a lot of room for interest rates to rise, thus putting a lot more risk within bonds. So we may want to have a little bit more stock heavy portfolio 
or even allocate to safe assets in a different way than bonds right now. And that's the last important finding here is that we shouldn't just be looking at our retirement portfolio as a two asset portfolio, stocks and bonds. There are numerous other assets that we can combine and build a better portfolio with. For instance, I have two charts that are looking at a five asset class diversified portfolio here. Now this diversified portfolio isn't anything crazy. It's still using stocks, bonds, some gold, and some other diversifiers that are commonly available but we'll see that this can oftentimes deliver a better outcome when we're looking at more of a diversified portfolio rather than just looking at a one or two asset class portfolio. And so we see from this analysis that retirement is a game of trade-offs. Now, how we get the most out of our retirement plan is balancing those trade-offs to maximize your goals. Now, what should be your most important goal in retirement? Should it be to maximize your probability success score? Should it be to optimize for the largest ending portfolio value or optimizing for the largest risk adjusted return? Well, actually it should be none of those things in my opinion. In fact, in this video right here, I talk about what I think should be your number one goal in retirement. It might be surprising to some of you. Thanks for watching and always remember you don't need more money, you need a better plan.